Hey guys, Patton here. So the newest Retrowork Neo 1.7.3b has finally been released and I'm gonna go over all the new features with you. So here's what we're looking at. The mod has been streamlined and is now less than half the size it was before. It's now only five megabytes instead of the 12 megabytes. Really nice for those NAND users. The Retroarch standalone app is now functioning as it is supposed to as well and saves work for it. You can now save when switching ROMs in the standalone Retroarch app. The N64 and PSX cores have had stability fixes and now function better with less C8 crashing. We have a new layout look. The loading and shutting down times for Retroarch has been reduced. The C8 errors have been fixed when loading Retroarch directly. For the SNES Classic users, holding the R button now enables bezel mode per core instead of the individual games, and various bug fixes. Before we continue, I do want to make note that the NES emulators have been removed from this version of Retroarch Neo, but there are four new NES cores that you can find in the HackG Mod Store. So you're going to have to get those to run your NES games now. They won't just work with the original Retroarch core anymore. If you're using a USB drive, you can now add a debug file to it for if you have any crashes when you're trying to run the app, it'll show what the errors were on that file. So here's the really cool stuff. You can now download and update your RetroArch cores directly from the RetroArch menu. You don't have to use Hackchi anymore if you don't want to. You can do that directly from RetroArch itself. If you choose to do that, you won't download the HMOD to your Hackchi program, so you won't have that for anything else, but it will be saved to your RetroArch options. The new RetroArch now has playlist support, meaning you can have just about all your ROMs that you can fit on your USB played directly from your RetroArch menu. And it includes thumbnails and box art, and I'll show you guys that in a little bit. And finally, there is network storage support, meaning through a folder on your PC or a network drive, you can access that with the Wi-Fi adapter through RetroArch to play as many games as you want that you have on your PC. You just need to have Wi-Fi enabled. So you're going to hear me talk about a Retroarch standalone launcher throughout this video. What that is, it's an app that you install just like a game onto your classic system that when you open it, it'll open into the Retroarch menu directly. A lot of these new features are usable only with this standalone Retroarch app. Like the save paths and the save states, they will only work correctly using this app. To get this application, you simply go to your modules tab in the newest version of HackG CE, go to the HackG Mod Store, open up the games tab, and you'll see it right here at the top of the list. Just click download game. Once you have it downloaded, it'll appear at the top of your screen and it'll look just like this. So if you're somebody who wants to bypass the classic user interface, just install this application to your system and you're ready to go. So the new debug feature is used for when you need some troubleshooting help or things like that, if you go to the Discord and you just can't get something to run, you can use this log file, give it to the devs, and they can help you out with your problem. It's very, very simple to do. You just go into your USB flash drive, you go into the HackChi folder, you're gonna right click in that folder, new text document. You're gonna rename the text document RA underscore DEV underscore M-O-D-E. Make sure it's spelled exactly like that with all capital letters. Then you're going to take out the extension and hit enter. Windows will ask if you want to change it. Say yes. So it should look something like this. Just RA dev mode file. Like I said, this is going to be very easy for the developers to help you out if you have problems. Let's take a look at the online updater feature in the RetroArch menu. So you go to online updater in the main menu and then you have some options here. You have the core updater, which is one of the main functions in this new RetroArch. The core updater will do just that. If you have any cores installed to your system already, the updater will bring it to the newest version on the HackG Cloud. For any cores that you don't have, the option will install the newest version to RetroArch. You won't be able to use this on the regular classic user interface. You can only use it through the RetroArch standalone app. You can update the core info files. That helps with stability of certain emulators. You can also download and update cheat databases for different cores because I know you guys love your cheats. And there's update databases which will download the database files if you're using the playlist function again using the RetroArch menu. If you use the new playlist feature, it just requires a USB drive and a lot of patience. The first thing you need to do is install the newest RetroArch Neo to your system. 
turn off your system, remove the USB drive, and then plug it into your PC. You should have a folder that looks like this with a data and HackG folder. If you open up the data folder, you'll see an RA data folder. That means that it was installed correctly and you have the folders needed for the next steps. There's a few files you're going to have to download from the LibRetro website. The first one is this database rdb.zip. I'll make sure that all links are in the description for you. The second is going to be the thumbnail set for whatever system you're going to be using. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the regular NES games, so I would download the Nintendo Entertainment System.zip. Once you have those files downloaded, go to your RA data folder database, and then RDB. When you unzip the RDB file, it should look something like this with a bunch of system names with the extension of RDB. For your thumbnails, you have to create this thumbnails folder. You just open that up and you'll unzip that file into this folder here. It should look something like Nintendo dash Nintendo Entertainment System. And finally, you have to create a ROMs folder. When you open that up, the folder should match the thumbnails folder exactly how it's named. So Nintendo Dash Nintendo Entertainment System. If we go in here, here are all our NES games. Once you have those files on your USB drive, plug it back into your classic system, boot it up, and go into the RetroArch menu. You're going to scroll all the way to the right to the Import Content option. You want to scan directory, go to media, which is your USB device. And then you're going to go to the folder where you have your ROMs. Ours were in data, RA data, ROMs, and then Nintendo Entertainment System. Now I've already created a playlist for my Nintendo games, so we will scan the Sega games. You just go to your Sega folder and then scan this directory. It's going to look like this. You're going to see a bunch of crazy numbers going on at the bottom. What that's doing is taking each ROM pairing it up with each thumbnail, each screenshot to create your playlist. This is where the patience comes in. This is going to take a very, very long time, especially if you have a slower flash drive. I have a very slow flash drive, so to scan the almost 700 Nintendo games took between 30 and 40 minutes for this to complete. So this takes a very, very long time. You should hit that scan directory button go and do something else and then come back. While this is scanning, that little notification at the bottom will disappear and reappear every now and then. But at the end, it'll tell you that the scanning is complete. So after the scanning is complete, back out of RetroArch, go back into the RetroArch menu again. You're gonna go to Settings. You're gonna go down to Playlist. You're gonna find the playlist you just created. And you're going to push left and right to select the core you're gonna to use to play those games. I prefer the FCEUMM core. And then you're going to back out. Once again, we're going to go all the way to the right and you should see a new icon for your NES games. The icon will be different for whatever system you create a playlist for. But as you can see here, all our games are on here with a nice screenshot. With the RetroArch menu, we have the entire NES library. There's no need for folders or anything like that. The entire thing is right here for you to load straight from the RetroArch menu. So these are for those people who aren't really interested in the NES or SNES Classic regular user interface menu. You can just get the standalone RetroArch app, use that to get access to your ROM directly with this nice playlist. The last thing I'm going to show you guys is how to access a network drive or a folder on your PC using RetroArch Neo on your classic system. First, we're going to adjust our network settings so that the folder we create is recognized by the classic system. To do that, you go to your network and internet settings, sharing options. Under the private dropdown, you're going to select the turn on network discovery option and make sure this box right here is checked. You're going to back out of your network settings, then we're going to create our folder right here on the desktop. So new folder, we're going to name the folder Neo. You're going to place your ROMs in this folder. You're going to right click your folder and then go to properties. Under the sharing tab, you're going to hit the share option right here. In the drop down, you're going to select everyone and then hit the add button. Click the share button after that and it'll tell you that your folder is now shared. Next, go to advanced sharing. Click the option to share this folder and then apply. Click OK. Then go to the security tab. If you have the everyone username listed right here, then you've done everything correctly. After you've set up your sharing for your network, you want to open up your Windows features. We're looking at this one specifically, the CIFS file sharing support. Make sure this box is checked. You'll have to check all three of these boxes right here for this check mark to appear, then click OK. 
We're gonna need a couple more things before we move on to our classic system. One, we need our IP address. To get your IP address, just open up your command prompt window and type in ipconfig. What you're looking for is this IPv4 address right here. So make sure you write down that number. Once you have that address, the next step is to change a config file that is on our classic system. There's a few different ways to edit the config file, such as uploading a new config file, putting it on your USB drive, you can telnet into your system, or you can FTP into your system. I'm gonna show you the FTP method because it was the easiest for me. So once you've accessed your system using an FTP program like FileZilla, you're gonna to go to the ETC folder, then libretro. The config file we want right here is mounted config. I'm gonna right click this, then view edit. This is gonna use my notepad plus plus program to open up that config file so I can edit it. All we have to do is change the RA mount address. You're gonna put in that address you copied down before from the command line. Then you're gonna put in the folder name where you have your ROMs. So we named our folder Neo. That's all you have to put in there. Hit the save button and then that's it. So now reconnect your Wi-Fi adapter to your classic system and then open up the RetroArch menu. If everything worked correctly, we should be able to go to load content. I'm gonna go down to this drive button, all the way down to var, mount, and there are the games that we put in our Neo folder. So you can also add folders to that shared folder directory so you can put your entire ROM library on your classic system from your PC. But again, this is for those people who aren't interested in the NES or the SNES user interface and want to run things directly from the RetroArch app. So there you have it. Those are all the new features of the newest release of RetroArch Neo 1.7.3b. I wanna thank everybody over at the Hackchi Resources team for continuing to create these really, really great things for your classic systems and for helping me out getting my network sharing stuff done because I was completely lost without their help. So if you guys need any help with getting any of this working, make sure you go to the Hatchy Resources Discord. I will put a link in the description for you to get there. Everybody there is very helpful and very nice. They can help you out with any problems that you're having. So that's it. Pick up the newest RetroArch Neo. Put it on your system. Enjoy all these new features. Make sure you keep stopping by the channel. I'm going to show you a lot more things you can do with your classic systems. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Hey guys, if you want to contact me outside of YouTube, feel free to use any of these social media platforms. Also, while you're here, why don't you check out some of the other videos that I put out, and if you feel like it, subscribe to the channel.